if you don't want a challenge, then stay at home. But if you want a challenge and you want a, something to pay off, then get into the sport. This is why I hunt. Holy cow. This is insane. It's emotion you could feel, you're going to feel during that. It's just an emotional roller coaster, man. Running up the score like Tyreek, I'm going deep. Watch me how I'm saucing, I'll be spreading it with ease. You're going to see the peace. You're going to see the flex when you hear these written. Trust me, you know the difference. All right, guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Let's Assess. So this is our third episode, and for all you guys who are out there watching uh, from one through three, we really appreciate it. Uh, today we're going to talk about hunting. So we want to start really broad with hunting, and uh, we'll get more and more in detail and giving tips and stuff like that the further we go along. Uh, AJ's here with me today. What's up, guys? Thanks for uh, following us this far, and welcome to episode three. Yep, and if for those of you who don't know, uh, most of you probably don't. He's a, a big hunting guide, so he's going to offer good advice all the way throughout the summer. But we're going to keep this a outdoor lifestyle podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, like the video, comment, share it. We appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. And if you're listening to it on a podcast platform, then go ahead, if you would, and uh, give us a five-star review and share it because that is how we're going to grow this thing and help more and more people with outdoor stuff. So we're going to get into it. Uh, What we want to talk about, we want to start out with how we got started into hunting, and I think that will help some people understand uh, what they can do. And then later in the podcast, we're going to give tips on how you can get started into hunting if you haven't already, because uh, where we're from, most people have started when they're really young, but I think most people in America right now or Canada or wherever you're listening from, um, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that don't know where to start and they're, you know, 25, 35, 45, 55 years old. And, uh, and why I think that this is good for us to help you is because we have polar opposite, um, stories. He grew up hunting like you'll hear, and I am what some would consider a new, but we offer a different perspective. So we're going to jump right into it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I grew up in a different scenario than you for sure. My family actually moved out here to uh, northwestern Colorado from Michigan, Illinois area um, near Chicago. And my grandpa always came out here hunting. And then that's what pulled them out here. So he always loved hunting out here. So then he moved the family out. And when, you know, obviously the family grew up and then I came along and everything, so on and so forth. My grandparents taught hunter education for many, many years here in Colorado. And then uh, my parents taught hunter education for many, many years. Um, That might probably die with me um, not doing that. (laughs) But um, there's so many other options to do it. And I'm just so busy with other stuff that's not going to happen. But for me, getting started hunting was, you know, started three generations ago with my grandpa deciding to move out here to hunt. And then got my dad into hunting. And then, you know, that whole or my whole family really got into hunting. And then my dad... Um, he, you know, he hunted himself and then he started guiding with one of his best friends out at a diamond peak outfitters, which is an outfitter out in the Northwestern corner of the state. And they're the, all the trophy units. So that's unit two, two Oh one, one ten. And those are a select number of units that are a high draw. Um, there's, we have preference points in Colorado. So every year you get one point. And so it takes, you know, 25, 26 years to draw those tags. So there's only a certain number of them. And uh, with Diamond Peak Outfitters, they offer a few tags that they get because they're a big ranch that has enough property that they can get tags for, you know, game damage, et cetera. So with and that. And the reason why you, you want these tags, for those of you who don't know, these are dinosaur-looking bulls. I mean, these yeah. bulls are huge out there, and they're concentrated, and they're protected um, when it comes to how many tags are released. And so you have a better chance. I mean, the, the point is, there's, correct me if I'm wrong, there's more big elk. Correct. Yeah. So instead of, you know, having more hunters out there and killing them at, you know, three, four years old, they're the majority of people are killing them like four years old and better probably. And, you know, your, your mature bull is probably like six or seven years old. You know, that's when they're in their prime, you know, as far as like strongest and everything like that. So that's what your goal is to kill a six or seven year old bull. And they just never get to grow that old when they're in these other units that have so much more hunting pressure with that little of hunter hunting pressure out there in those units, 
they just, you know, they get to grow up. They actually get to live their full lifespan. A lot of them die from old age even. So, you know, they kind of grow up and grow bigger, bigger, bigger antlers and their body, everything, you know, they grow bigger and then they start declining actually. So you, uh, you see that full cycle out there in those areas and that's what makes it so sought after. And not that it's a hundred percent success rate, but like if you wanted to just go kill a bull elk out there or, you know, even for the deer, you know, if you just wanted to kill a, a male deer out there, a buck, that's, yeah, I mean, you could just go kill one, you know, and that's what it's managed is, you know, that's a quality hunt. So you can go out and actually see an animal and kill it where these other areas, you're going to have to work for it a little bit. You know, you got to put the, the time in, yep. um, kind of to get back to that, you know, in those units and with the, the ranch there and everything. Um, my dad guided there for 20 plus years. So as I was growing up, I was always going with him for the scouting and, um, you know, preseason stuff, getting ready, you know, getting the whole lodge ready during the daytime. And then we'd go out and look at animals in the night in the mornings, whatever we were down there for the weekend. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how I got hooked, you know, getting that elk screaming in your face or finding, you know, big sheds or, you know, whatever that was just spending that time out in that environment. Um, so that's how I got kind of like hooked on it. And then I would say, being, you know, just close to that guiding, that's how I really got started. You know, as I was a kid growing up, my dad would take me hunting, you know, 12 on, I could start big game hunting here in Colorado. So, you know, we'd go kill a cow here and there, or, you know, hunt a deer, you know, per se. And then that was just, you know, like one a year, whatever for fun. And that's, you know, what's got me into it. And then as I started getting older, I was like, okay, I really like this guiding stuff. Like, this is what I want to get into. This is something that you know, I, I enjoyed that passion that my dad passed on to me. I should pass that, pass that passion on to other people as well. And as soon as I was uh, old enough, 18 years old to start guiding, I started guiding myself as out there with, as with my dad at Diamond Peak Outfitters and kind of never have turned back since, you know, and that's where I've really enjoyed, you know, hunting those big animals out there. And that's led me to where I'm at now. I, you know, now I'm getting older, I'm getting more tags to hunt myself in these areas. So I've really been enjoying that, you know, trying to find certain sneak areas to, you know, maybe lower points to draw more tags a year or in the years to come to hunt quality animals. That's what I prefer is to hunt, you know, a real mature animal. I don't really see the you know, going out and just killing to kill. So I'm big on killing a, a full grown mature animal. And that's what I try to try to do myself. And I try to do that with my hunters out in those units as well. So that is kind of a brief description of how I got into it and started and family background and all that. And I'll turn it back over to Brent. He's got a completely different uh, way of getting into this. Yeah. So the way I got into this is <clears throat> growing up where we are, um, hunting is like church in some areas. Like hunting is such a big deal here. <clears throat> if you have a tag that like when you're in school, you're getting pulled out of school. Yeah. Your parents are like, it is such a big deal. Hunting is like, it's like you said, a lot of people came out here to hunt. They I, live, moved here to hunt. Yeah. A lot of people moved here to hunt. And I think, you know, like that hunting heritage that is still out there in a lot of these families, like they take it seriously. Like even I know when I was in Minnesota living, you know, they even like get school off, like for hunting yeah. for whitetails and stuff, back, which is incredible. But I mean, kind of that same thing here, like the families that take it seriously, it's like, yeah, you are not going to school. We are going hunting. Yeah. I remember in elementary school, like some of the teachers would have work prepared for the kids that they knew were going to be gone second season rifle or third season rifle, or whatever. But that was not me. So I was like during the hunter safety thing, I was always playing football and it really wasn't that important to me. My dad grew up hunting, but um, I, he kind of quit before or once I was born. So I've been around it and uh, I never really had that much of a desire. And uh, so then COVID happened and I, uh, I was home from college and my buddy had an archery tag and he's like, dude, come with me. And I'm like, all right, like I love being outside and I like I was like, yeah, let's go do it. So I was in there in like just a t shirt and jeans and a camera and he bugles and now for the first time ever I saw a bu or like a an elk within maybe twenty five, fifty yards ish bugle in my face and I'm sitting there holding the camera just shaking like, Oh my god, this is insane. And uh 
he he was just like sitting there and you know he didn't have a shot on it and I don't think he would have shot it anyway but I left that I remember walking back to the truck after that and I was like holy cow this is insane and I really 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 need to do this yeah and so it's COVID. I go online. I'm like, what do I need to do to get my hunter safety? And they're offering classes where you don't have to be in person. Yeah. You can just take them right online. And I'm sitting here like doing homework, just wasting time in COVID. And so I got my hunter safety. And so then I went rifle hunting and I didn't really like it. I didn't have much time and it was, I don't know. But then I got into it, had the time the next season to uh, get a bow set up and go archery hunting and that is where everything changed i we had probably i there i was in school so i was doing homework you know midday and hunting in the morning and at night and i hunted probably 20 days and i hit a few animals but didn't get one the first year and but i was in love with it like i was in love with the physical part of it being outside camping in a tent way up the mountain I loved all of it. And my buddy, he fills every year. He's a really good archery hunter. So he he filled towards the end of the season after he'd gotten done helping me. So the next season, which is last season, I've only been doing this a couple seasons. Um, I second night I got a bull with a bow. And so it was it just the experience. We're we're sitting up on a hill and there's a black bear and two cubs right under us. And we're trying to put a stock on a bull. And uh, it was too early in the rut. And so th- we were calling and he was calling, but he wasn't coming. Yep. And so, that's the, you know, that's the difference, I think, between like archery hunting and rifle hunting is in that situation, like, yeah, you cannot, like, you can't make a move. You're doing everything in your power to make that move. You're as close as you can. And you just got to, you know, swallow your pride and take it for the day what it was. You know, if you had a rifle, yeah, yeah it would have been done. But would have smacked him. But so anyway, he wouldn't come. And we put a two and a half hour stock on him and I hit him at 50 yards in the neck and uh, he was, he died pretty quick, which I was thankful for. Um, But yeah, it was super cool. And then packing it out and everything. So there's so many things about hunting that I just absolutely love. The encounter, the struggle, the physical part, being outside, being with your buddies. I mean, there's a million different things Uh, for me and similar to AJ, it's not necessarily killing the animal. It's uh it's playing the game with the animal, playing chess with them, and, and seeing if you can beat them at their game and their and their habitat. So that's kind of how I got into it. But I've actually, I'm I'm pretty grateful because I've been around a lot of people that have done a ton of hunting. So even though I've been, you know, hunting for three seasons, I I have learned a ton. Like I've been around people that have been hunting forty years and just picking their brains all the time and trying to get to understand why they're calling here, why they're not calling, you know, how to, how to do everything. And so I feel like I know enough to go out and, uh, and get a bull and know what I'm doing. And so that's, what's kind of cool is I bring that perspective of, uh, thinking kind of like a beginner and AJ will bring that perspective of like, I'm I'm a seasoned vet. Been around it for a while, yeah. yeah. And, and I, so the things, but it's like we talk. It's like the things that I think to ask, he probably doesn't even think of. It's just second nature to him. But yeah, to me, it. it's like so. I remember having a conversation with my buddy. We were up in Alaska, and I and I was telling him, I'm like, dude, here's the thing, because archery season was coming up. I'm like, dude, when do you call? Like, do you do I just? And I'm the guy that steps out of the truck and just starts bugling because <laughs> I just like to hear the animals. <laughs> bugle but when you're putting on a stock like when do I cow call when do I bugle when do I do this when do I do that and we sat there and he just explained it to me and obviously it's not black and white but there's some certain rules that you can use and it proved to be true what he told me proved to be true so these are the kind of topics we can cover on this podcast but now you know we we talked about we want to give you guys something of value here we want to explain to you guys how you can get started in hunting so i i think like one thing before we get started into that was like i think that's the coolest thing about hunting is like here i am you know a lot more years into it than you 
and I still like go out there with the same mindset as you though, is like you learn every single year. You Every single time you go out there, you learn from it, right? And you use that knowledge and you use that the next time you hunt. Same thing for you. Like you're trying to get advice on hunting and stuff like that. And I mean, I'm doing the same thing as well, just maybe at a you know different level. But I think that's the coolest thing about hunting is it never ends. Like you are never going to be perfect. It can't be perfect. You know, yeah. just there is no algorithm to make it perfect. And that's what draws, I think, me and you. And that's what brings you into it is you have to continually learn it. Right. And you, that's, uh, you know, what we're going to share with you guys and hopefully get you started in on that. But it is something that you will continuously learn. And that's what draws you back to it is the, you know, the challenge, I guess. Yeah. And going into the next topic off that of, of how you can get started. The, the thing with that though, is to get started and to see success is tough and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's tough. If you don't know what you're doing, it, it's a struggle. Don't plan on success yeah, that first year. That's just yeah. how it goes. And if you're not, if you don't want a challenge, then stay at home. But if you want a challenge and you want a, something to pay off, then get into the sport. And the thing is, is when, you know, take, take something like dirt biking or mountain biking, anybody can go buy a dirt bike and start to learn because yeah. It, it's it's easier to get into now to be a super cross champion that's not what i'm talking about i'm yep. talking about just putting down a road yep. you can do that um you know mountain biking you can start on little trails and work your way up but with hunting you're dealing with like a third party and that third party is alive because they are good at surviving that is all they do they don't go on their cell phones they don't go watch movies their job in their entire life is to survive yeah and your job when you're hunting that sounds kind of messed up, but your job is to beat them at that. To beat them, yeah. yeah and so, so it, it's it's tricky, it, especially with archery hunting. I think archery hunting is has a oh. has a bigger learning curve. But I was that's what I like to do. Yep. I rifle hunting doesn't. It didn't do it for you. It didn't that do it didn't for excite me. you. Yeah, yeah the so archery was just like, oh my gosh, dude! Like yep. this is epic. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips to get into it. As you know, someone who I have an archery bull under my, under my belt. And I think the first thing is just get out there, like get a tag, get a bow or a rifle, whatever you're going to use, get it, go to your local shop, have them help you. Don't think you know everything and, and have them set it up to your, you know, like if you're doing a bow, ask them what you can do for your budget, have them adjust it for you, have them build you some arrows and, start to learn, start shooting, start shooting, start shooting, and just get out there, get a tag and get out there. For those of you who are in a place where you can hunt right out your back door, start scouting now and just learn and learn and learn and see the animals. That's my first tip. My first tip is to just get out there and get started My se because you're going to learn a lot along the way. My second tip is YouTube. Yeah. YouTube is such a good tool. Like I remember looking up how to call. Um, you can look up like small things like how, to, well, I mean, I mean like more specific things like calling, how to field dress an animal, um, how to shoot a bow. But not only that, look up like um, Sitka makes good ones, Kuyu makes good ones, um, Go Hunt. All these companies make really good hunting films. I mean, there's a ton of them. And watch a full hunt and see what it's going to it kind takes. of be like. Yeah. yeah. And see what they do and see the the thing. And then the other thing that I think will help you guys off YouTube is I'm a gear junkie, but I think having a, a kind of an understanding of what you need to go out there yep. and perform, whether it's the right tent, whether it's the right backpack, whatever, um, I think that YouTube can help you with that too. So yeah, I think that might be even one of the most important things if you're getting into this though, is, you know, see what gears out there, see what the gear that other people are using, see what gear is going to work best for you. Because let's be honest, if you get out there and it's not fun, are you going to do it again? No. And you don't want to invest all that money for it to not be fun. Right. So Being if you set yourself up for cold. success, yeah, like no. set yourself up for success. Don't, don't, uh, you know, don't put the effort in to know what you need to be out there. I mean, just like we do with snowmobiles, everything, like you put that 
all those tools that you need just in case in your your pack, you know? Right. And I think that's probably really, really important on those YouTube videos is seeing what other people use to be successful that way and not successful in killing, successful in just being out there and comfortable. Yeah, and we're going to cover those in, in, uh, in podcasts to come. But if you guys have specific questions, comment or DM us on Instagram at Cook Bros or Stoffel 800. We'll have those on the screen. And uh, and ask us questions. We'll, I guarantee you, someone else has the same question, and we'll we'll answer it on the on a podcast or on a YouTube video. But the gear thing is crucial. You don't have to go out and spend a ton of money, but you need. I mean, for example, I went with a guy who we went out to look at elk, and he had a rifle tag, and he didn't have a knife. Yeah, I'm like, so what happens if you kill it? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, and that's like, I even I packed rain gear for many yeah. years never used it and then last year i am you know so glad that i packed that rain gear however many miles because for those three days that i needed it that was you the best it. thing yeah <laughs> i needed it you know yeah. like that was like between life and death almost as cold as it got you know and if you're wet it'd be over and you're you know so many miles from your vehicle whatever so it's it's things like that that you just need yeah and and so going back to how you can get started the first thing get out there start especially for you guys that aren't growing up in the mountains get outside and just look at animals you know start using your binoculars and just get good at spotting animals seeing yeah. what they're doing looking at spots that's my first one second one youtube if you have a hunting question um go look on youtube if it doesn't exist message us it probably does exist but if it doesn't message us we'll make a youtube or a podcast about it and third is um talking to people on well we just talked about this talking to people either in person that know what they're doing like for me it was my buddy and his family they took me under their wing they love the sport and so they wanted to help me and it i will always appreciate that of them because it was super cool that they did that for me um and got me and showed me what they love to do people want to show you because there's enough animals for them and you yep. to hunt so Ask those people. The other thing is um, go on Facebook groups. That yeah. you, you talked about that. That yeah. is a big deal because there are Facebook groups out there with, if you're going to hunt Wyoming, go on a Wyoming hunting group. If you're going to go here, 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 there's always hunting groups. There's archery groups. There's rifle groups. There's, you know, I mean, I, there's hunting gear groups. There's everything that you can imagine. So join those communities and get out there and ask questions a lot of people want to help and don't be afraid to look like an idiot. I'm shooting a podcast about hunting and I'm a noob. So you can get out there and ask a question on a Facebook group. I promise. Yeah. And I think on those, you know, Facebook groups, you know, a lot of those people are the same as like us. If somebody came to us with a question or, you know, help to get into hunting, we're going to definitely help to do that. You know? And I mean, that's something that I thoroughly enjoy with the guiding is helping other people, you know, in that situation, that's something you can also do is you know hire a guide or an outfit or something like that and you know that if you have no dead in road you don't want to be on facebook whatever like you can hire somebody even to take you hunting and that can teach you a lot you know yeah it's gonna be more expensive but that is an option as well but in those you know groups a lot of those people might be looking for a buddy to hunt with as well you might hit it off with them and you guys then are hunting buddies for life but you know there are other people out there in your shoes and then there's a lot of other people that are willing to you know educate you help you whatever or it might even be somebody that is on the same level as you doesn't know anything but you guys can go learn the struggle together right yeah. like it's it's just better when you have a buddy to to get struggle with through it you know for sure what else do you think can help people i think that's a good point i didn't even think about hiring an outfitter yeah you know i think that's a, with, a really i know a bunch of outfitters they're all really good guys i don't know why i wouldn't think of that but i didn't just now so yeah you know what there's else? so many levels of a guide to hire you know you can even hire um uh people to like backpack you or not backpack you but like pack you in on horses to pack your camp into the forest and then they pack you into a place and then they'll give you an idea of like hey there's animals in this area go figure it out or you can have fully guided you could even have you know hey i don't want to go in a tent i want to be in a lodge with a cook and everything you know it, that that is limitless wherever you know you want to however you want to spend your money i guess on that but i think something that I think is important for people to get started. Like you said, getting into it, just get out there. 
I honestly would have to second it. Like that's the probably the most important thing. Get out there and not just get out there, but play with the different animals, not play with them. But <laughs> um, yeah, don't, don't, don't go touching them. But, um, you know, see what you like. Find what you are passionate about hunting. You know, it sounds like Brent's more passionate about elk hunting, right? I have found myself being more passionate towards mule deer hunting now. But you might like hunting black bear, you know, you might find, you know, sitting on a water hole or something like that more exciting for you. So I think get out there, try the different varieties of, you know, just put yourself in that scene, you know, midsummer, whatever, what, what you're looking or what you're excited for and see if that is something you're really interested in, something you want to deep dive into. Um, I think that's probably, you know, get yourself hooked. That's, you know, yeah. get yourself hooked on it. That's the best thing. And if you can find someone to take you out that knows what they're doing, that knows where the animals are, if you're someone, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably an outdoor, you like outdoors in some manner. Um, If you can go out and have a good first experience, I mean, that's a great idea. Even if you just say for the first year, I'm going to hire an outfitter. Yep. And just say, I'm going to hire an outfitter one year. I'm going to save for a year. I'm going to hire one. And maybe it's not in a trophy unit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it's just... And and you go out there and you you learn you pick their brains and maybe then the next year you can do it yourself, but that will get you hooked. the The thing that I encourage people to do is put your ego aside and try everything you can to go with someone that knows what they're doing, because that is what got me hooked. Yep. If I would have went out there, we saw no, we're just staring at sagebrush all day. I mean, it would have been a completely different thing. Yeah. But that's not what happened. It was an awesome experience. And so I encourage you guys to get in the community, start following people on Instagram that do hunting stuff. And just when you immerse yourself that in that with social media, YouTube podcast, I mean, it really does help you understand because you'll pick little things from one person, pick some more from the other. That's what I do. And uh, I mean, I even talked to AJ one day snowmobiling, we were, we were BS and I was talking like, for me, hunting deer right now and it's subject to change yep. i'm so new to archery elk hunting that it really gets me going it gets you. Yeah. yeah but like for him he's like dude i really like deer hunting is where it's at for me i'm like it doesn't really get me going rifle hunting i'm not against it i would do it but i'd much rather bow hunt and so just get out there and talk to people and it's like he's saying get out there and uh and maybe hire a guide that's yeah. actually a really good idea i think that would be like you know, probably your best way if you have no connections with anybody. If you have connections with somebody that is a hunter, though, go just like Brent did. Go shadow them for a day, a night, whatever, you know, and just shadow them for to see if you're interested. You know, I mean, yeah. that is the best way to get. So I'll, pa- to, I'll help pack your animal out for yeah. free. Just teach me or just, just take me. Just take me with. I just want to join along. You know, I'll video you with my iPhone or whatever, yeah. you know, like just just get out there, number one. And I help think. them. Yeah, help If they're going to help you, you help them. Yep. But that's the thing, like with my buddy talking about that. I went out with him, and uh, dude, I annoyed the living snot out of him. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that? Why? Are, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Why are you calling? Where is it? I don't see it. You know, that's how you learn. And now I feel like um, I could go do it, and I know enough to do it by myself. Would I like to do it by myself? No, I like being with my buddies, but the point is, is this is how you learn. And so put your ego, leave it in the house and go out and just ask questions. Yep. Every time, you know, you're in that field, you can always learn something from whether you're at the gun shop, whether you're at the bow shop, whether you're at the the range practicing, you know, archery or rifle. If you're just at the range practicing all these people out there, you know, they're, they enjoy the same thing as you do. So, Mm -hmm. you know, go pick their brain. Maybe, Hey, I'm having a hard time with my scope or my pins are moving or something, you know, most likely, They've probably been through the same struggle as you or, you know, willing to help you figure it out for sure. Um, Another good option, and um, I know here in Colorado, we have a program for people to get into hunting as Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They have on their website um, a form that you can fill out and they take new hunters out. They, uh, you know, it's a pool of people that put in for it, but there's women and men's and youth hunting and they have um, people in the state hired to specifically put on hunts and take you out hunting mm. and teach you. So that's another great resource as well. If you're really getting into it now, no, it's not going to be a trophy hunt or anything like that, but they are actually very successful hunts. 
they go hunt on these ranching for wildlife properties. They get access onto a lot of these landowners that have animals on their property because they're kind of a nuisance and they want them taken care of. So Colorado Parks and Life, hey, we got these new hunters. They want to learn how to hunt. And what better than to, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the time game wardens will be the ones that even take you out and stuff like that. And, you know, they'll teach you right from wrong, but then also, um, you know, they know how the field dress and all that stuff. So it's, it's educational from start to finish. And generally they are pretty successful. I think that's, that's a, awesome. another great option to get started. And I'm sure other states probably have the same, same things. You know, I can't remember what the exact name of it is, but it's like, uh, you know, a hunt coordinator or something like that, that states have, and they, they, uh, can do that for you. So, yeah. so there's the point is that we're making here. There's plenty of options for you to get into hunting. Um, it's a, it's tough. I'm not going to cap. It's tough, but there are a lot of ways for you to learn a lot of ways for you to get your feet wet in the sport. And so take that first step and you'll be glad you did. So, yeah, I think, you know, that's, um, you know, once you take that first step, step, that's exactly what's, uh, going to hook you. Right. And then once you're hooked, it's just an emotional roller coaster, man. Like yeah. literally every experience that I've had hunting is just like pulling at your heartstring and pulling your hair out like frustration and then, you know, mixed with some joy and some happiness. And like, it's just every emotional, like emotion you could feel, you're going to feel during that. And, you know, I've got two stories here that I'll tell that this is why I hunt is, you know, this, I had a client that he flew in and we waited the time period that he couldn't um, hunt because he had flew in. He had just had a granddaughter, so he flew in a little late to season. We like got settled at the lodge, everything like that. And the first time we could hunt, we drive like down the road, get to the hunting spot, get out and walk. I bet we walked maybe half a mile and the stars just aligned perfectly. You know, this monster bull came out. It was like 363 inches. That's the size of the antlers on it. Um, That's a toad. So monster bull, right? And I mean, 30 minutes into this hunt, walked half a mile, and this bull's just beating this tree to shit, right? And I'm just like, wow, okay, that's a pretty good bull. And he's all excited, and he's like, I think we need to shoot that one. I'm like, we can't even see it yet. We don't even know. Like, <laughs> you know, he looks big, but he's in a tree. Gets out of the tree, and uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good bull. We better better take him. So, I mean, it was, you know, 45 minutes, and we were done, right? Like, that was everything aligned perfect. And, you know, you're just like on top of the world, like, man, things just couldn't have went better. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, another story is just last year, I had a unit one muzzleloader tag and, uh, I've waited 14 years for this tag. I, I started putting in for points the, the first year I could when I was 12. My actually, and I started actually, putting in points this year. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My dad actually got me a bonus point. Um, I had one on top of like everybody in my age group because, there was one late cow season that he was able to put me in for for when I was 11 because I turned 12 in December <laughs> and it was like perfect, right? Got an extra point out of it. So I was a little bit ahead of some people. But uh, on that hunt, I had 14 years of waiting for this tag. All the, you know, pressure of being a guy to killing all these big elk and, uh, and just nothing uh, tripped my trigger. You know, we chased one bull really, really hard and was unsuccessful on him to some other uh, circumstances. And then, you know, started trying to find another target bull and we never turned up one that got me excited. And that's what I hunt for is the excitement, right? I mean, I was excited just being out. I was enjoying the process, but if I'm going to kill something, it has to get me excited. Like I want to have to want to kill it. Right. And uh, I just never, never got that feeling on another bull then. So I burnt 14 years of waiting. We hunted 10 days on that, or it was nine days. I think they changed it, but nine days straight. And I mean, morning and night, all day, you know, hiking. I think we did 77 miles and like 17,000 uh, feet in elevation climbing. Like it was just absolutely brutal. And it just, you know, that is what I enjoyed. I would do it again this year and not kill one because I thoroughly enjoyed that hunt. And I didn't kill anything. I mean, I, I burnt 14 years of my life for that tag. And I didn't kill anything. And I would do it again this year because it was just, that enjoyable and you know it was an emotional roller coaster in the middle of the week hunt and i'm like that lost that bull and i mean it was just like a, you know shot to me right like i just got killed right and it was just like god i 
what are we going to do now? You know, that's the, the one we were after. And then, you know, okay, yep, let's get back on our feet. Let's go. And we kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And I mean, we were in elk. We were, you know, screaming that everything that you're talking about, you know, they're bugling in your face. You're, you can smell them, you know, like oh, you yeah. are, when you are in them, you smell them. And we actually found where a couple of them had fought and broke some tines off and stuff. And I mean, I'll bet it was a 30 foot round circle and you can tell they were just going at it for a long time. And you know, that's the stuff that we saw after, uh, after we'd lost that bull and started looking around more and that, you know, that's what emotionally got me, you know, hooked more into that hunt. I feel like I just, I, I loved it. I would, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. And for me, <clears throat> a lot of it is just, the, the why I love to hunt now is it is just such a challenge. It is you're being put to the test physically. You're being put to the test mentally. You're being put to the test with luck. <clears throat> you're being put to the test in every every possible way. And that there's something in hunting. It's like I've told people there's something in hunting that like grounds you and gets you back to what you feel like as a human, you were made to do your roots. Yeah. yeah. It makes you feel, you know, you're under the stars, you're by the campfire, you're with, with the guys and, or girls or whatever. And you're People just having, you love, yeah. You know, and, and you're just, you're in that moment of the bulls coming into you. If you're archery hunting and that is all that matters. You're shaking, you're trying not to do anything wrong you're trying to do everything right and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but one of the stories i had real quick before we wrap this up i was wearing an apple watch on my first encounter i've told aj this i was wearing a uh apple watch well here let me back it up so this is what happened my buddy is behind me in the bushes <clears throat> he tells me go down to this bush and, and this is my first archery encounter and he tells me he says I'm going to call that bull right up towards you. And he bugles, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And this was the first day of archery season. This was like a couple years ago. And he makes one call, and I hear coosh, coosh, and I'm like, hmm. And I look over on the other ridge. This bull, dude, turns around, <laughs> goes down the ridge, straight down the ridge, straight to me. You're running at And you. I'm like, oh, my God, is this thing going to run happening. me over and kill me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's happening. Yeah. I'm not ready for it to happen. Holy yeah. cow. Happens too fast. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, I know how to shoot a bow now, but, like, now what? And so he walks right up to me, and my buddy didn't even see him. So he's, like, calling, and this bull is just bugling in my face. I mean, he is just right. He's probably... 15 yards from me which with an animal that big is close yeah like it's almost scary yeah like you're like they don't they are ready to kill you at that point <laughs> yeah. it feels like yeah yeah and so he tips his head back and he starts and he bugles in my face and i'm like shaking i'm like oh my god dude this is insane like what a, and so i'm like just draw the bow back draw the bow back so i like pull it and i'm like shaking backwards i pull it back and i'm like sitting there behind this bush and this goes with experience i wasn't ready to shoot yeah. i had a bush right in front of me he's right in front i mean i could have stuck him i could have reached out and like went like this to his <laughs> tongue if yeah. i wanted to but i was behind a bush bad i mean there again you have to it, it takes yeah. experience so he comes around and i am like trying not to lose it it is like the coolest thing i have adrenaline just seeping from my body right now and i pull back I had to like pull, I had to release. Then I pull back again and I look at this bull and I take a shot and I am so amped up. I don't even know if I hit him. I don't know. I don't know where the arrow went. I'm just so like, and so we look and the arrow, I think went under him. I ended up shooting him. I had a shot at like 45 or 50 yards and my, so here's the story. So my my Apple Watch is going, zzz, 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 and I'm like, what in the heck? So I pull it up, and my watch on my life reads, um, seek rest immediately. Your heart rate has been at a lethal level for too long. <laughs> and that Crazy. just goes to show, dude, my heart was just, I could feel it in my face, just douche, 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 douche. And that is where I got really, really hooked. So then we go down, I'm like, dude, okay, that was just terrible. It took... 
it took a while. And so we we're going to go down for lunch and then go back up in the, in the night. And my buddy's grandparents are sitting down there and I walk in with my tail tucked between my legs. I'm like, I thought this was going to be easy, but this is really tough. <laughs> and I, so I say, um, they're like, Oh my gosh, what happened guys? And, and my buddy's like, well, there's a bull about 15 yards away from him. And I'm, and they're like, did you kill it? And, uh, I'm like, unfortunately, no. I uh, got a little too excited, <laughs> and so and I told them about the watch, and they just started busting up laughing. They're like, "That is so awesome that like, you know, you felt that, and like now you're gonna be hooked." And I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, I'm hooked. Let's go, let's go, let's go." So, anyway, I mean, I think we wrap it up here. Yeah, we well, both said our piece on this. Yeah, and I think like that's another super cool thing about hunting is like that exact story you then learn from that right like that experience was not only like oh over the top you know for you but it's something that you learn from and then then you the next time you were a little more not as shaky right because you were getting a little more prepared you knew it was about to come right but yeah absolutely that first time is just a absolute rush and whew, amazing yeah so, it yeah. it's nothing like so if you guys are you good i'm good yeah i All think right. that was great i think we wrap it up um for those of you who have never hunted, please, please, please go out and hunt. Um, even if you're not successful, you're going to find a lot of joy in it. Challenge yourself. That's what gets you back to what you're supposed to do and uh, get you rid of all the jacked up thoughts that we have on a daily basis living in the 21st century. So thank you, guys. Uh, podcast three will be out or four will be out soon. Um, like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram. The Instagram things will be up on the screen. And uh, we love you. We appreciate we appreciate y'all. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, give us you know a star rating and uh, on any platform you can. Tell us what you want to see. If you have any pointers, if you have any questions, put that in the comments. And uh, thank you guys for the support. All right, guys. Peace out. Love you.